Wait, that's the answer? Ugh, I can only imagine what the question looks like. In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve some more complex problems involving combinations. Recall that a combination is an arrangement of some number of items where we don't consider the order when looking at distinct cases. Check out the linked video for more information on this topic. Now I'm going to use an example of a game called Euchre. Note that you do not need to know how to play Euchre to understand the example shown. However, you should note that the game Euchre uses only cards of value 9, 10, Jack, Queen, King, and Ace. Since there are only 6 card types in this game, and there are 4 suits of cards, hearts, diamonds, spades, and clubs, there are a total of 24 cards in this game. In the game of Euchre, 5 card hands are dealt to players. Let's say we wanted to determine how many Euchre hands contain at least 3 queens. Now the first thing you need to think about here is whether this problem is asking us to apply either permutations or combinations. Recall that a permutation involves arranging items in a definite order whereas a combination involves arranging items in a non-definite order, or where order does not matter. Because we're dealing with a hand of cards, remember, I'm able to reorganize the cards that I was dealt without creating multiple distinct hands. For example, I can switch the place of the first and second card and still have the same hand. So in this example, we're interested in how many euchre hands contain at least three queens. This problem is tricky because of this at least phrase. At least means there are multiple cases, and it can be kind of difficult to make sure that you're considering all cases when solving a problem. We need to ask ourselves how many ways we can get at least three queens. With some thought, you should see that it can happen in two ways. The first case is we get the minimum number of queens, three, and two other cards. Remember, euchre involves five card hands. So if I've got three queens, I have to have two other non-queen cards in my hand in order to make up a five card hand. The second case is that I have four queens and one other card. Again, I have to have five cards in my hand in total. If four of them are queens, the remaining card must not be a queen. I know that these are the only two possible cases because remember that there are only a total of four queens in this game. Therefore, the maximum number of queens I can have is four. And since I need at least three queens, I can conclude that these are the only two cases where this can happen. So let's start by looking at the first case, having three queens and two other cards. I want to think about the number of ways that this can happen. Now we know that there are a total of four queens in this game. Because I'm dealing with combinations, I can say four choose three will give me the number of possible ways that I can get three queens. Four possible queens, and I'm choosing three of them. And remember, the order does not matter. Anytime you're solving a problem involving combinations or permutations, the word and always refers to multiplication. Because I have three queens and two other cards, I'm going to multiply 4 choose 3 by the number of ways I can get 2 other cards. Remember this game has 24 cards in total. If 4 of them are queens, that leaves 20 non-queens, and I need to choose 2 of them. So this expression here should tell me the total number of ways I can get 3 queens and 2 other cards. But remember, that's just one case. We also need to consider the second case, where I had 4 queens and 1 other card. Using similar logic to case 1, you should be able to see that 4 choose 4 times 20 choose 1 will give me the number of possible ways I can have 4 queens and 1 other card. There are 4 queens in total, I'm choosing 4 of them, and I'm multiplying by the remaining 20 cards from which I'm choosing 1. So if I have 2 cases where I can get at least 2 queens, and I add those 2 cases together, I should get the total number of possible ways I can get at least 3 queens. I'm going to leave my answer in this form, as this is the best way to represent all the thinking that went on in this problem. But suffice it to say, my answer is a very big number. Let's look at another example. If we're still playing Euchre, I want to find out how many Euchre hands contain at least two black cards. Again, we have this at least, which is going to complicate our solution a little bit. This time we're looking at black cards. Remember, two out of the four possible suits are black, the spade and the club. We know that there are six cards in each suit and there are two black suits. Therefore, we can say there are 12 black cards in total. Now, if I want to look at the number of ways I can get at least two black cards, remember, I can only have five cards in total. So that means I could have two, three, four, or five black cards. That's four different cases. Sounds like a lot of work. You'll note that there are actually less ways that we could not get at least two black cards than there are ways that we can get at least two black cards. I could have zero black cards or one black card. Looking at two cases is much less time consuming than looking at the case where I have two, three, four, and five black cards. Therefore, we're going to use the indirect method. Remember, the indirect method is looking at the cases where we don't get the scenario we're interested and subtracting it from the total number of cases possible. So the first case is when I get zero black cards and five red cards. Remember, I have to have five cards in my hand. If I get zero black cards, all five cards must be red. 
I know there are 12 possible black cards. I'm choosing zero, which means I must have five red cards chosen from the remaining cards in the deck, which must all be red. A good way to check that you're on the right track here is by adding the first number in front of each of your choose expressions. 12 plus 12 equals 24, which is the total number of cards available. We can also add the second numbers, zero plus five, to check that we are in fact choosing five cards. Looking at the second case, where I have one black card and four red cards, we can use similar logic to say 12 choose one times 12 choose four will model this case because I have two cases where I have at least two black cards. I can add these two together, just like the last example, but remember, I'm subtracting them from the total number of hands possible, 24 possible cards, and I'm choosing five. This should provide me with the number of euchre hands that contain at least two black cards. So as you can see, these problems can get pretty complex. You can definitely solve these problems without knowing how to play card games like euchre, but as you saw, you do need a basic understanding of the number of cards in a deck, the number of cards in each suit, and the number of each type of card in the deck. With all of this information, you should be able to solve pretty much any combination problem. If you found this video helpful in any way, like and subscribe for more mathematical chaos. And as usual, thanks for watching.